Hey folks, David here, and I'm back from Seattle, so quick thing on that, it was awesome, I want to move back, uh, or go back, and then probably move there someday with Jade, which is awesome. Um, and I guess today's video is going to be a little bit different, I'm going to be doing kind of like, I guess, like a tutorial, um, uh, more so advice, because I get this asked this a lot by friends and family, and that is, what camera to buy? Now, I could tell you, go buy the cameras I use, like the GH5 or the Canon 5D Mark IV, because they're great cameras and they do a lot of things that other cameras can't do. But you probably don't have $4,000 lying around. And you probably are just starting off and you don't know what you're gonna be doing. So, you know, buying a big chunky camera like this that's gonna run you like four grand with the lens it's absurd that you want to buy this when you're just starting off and let me give you a little bit of background on how I got started as a photographer um, I started with my iPhone 4s when I was up in Big Bear with my friends and fa or sorry with my family and I fell in love with it it was awesome just to take pictures and look back it's like oh wow this came out really good then I bought a little DSLR camera to teach myself how to take pictures I started off in auto and eventually I moved over to manual and I got better and better the more I practice. Was it the best camera in the world? No, by all means, no. It was a Canon T3i, which was at the time a good entry level camera, but by today's standards, it's, it's not as good as it used to be. The three things I want you to keep in mind when you're looking, or I guess shopping around for a camera is what you're gonna use it for, specifically what you're going to use it for because I know what I'm using it for but do you know what you're using it for? The features you want and the price that you're willing to pay for it. What's your budget? So what are you going to use it for? Are you going to be shooting weddings? Are you going to be shooting your children? Are you going to just do some uh, landscape photography or are you an enthusiast and kind of like wanting to learn more about the art of photography? Those are just some general examples you should keep in mind. Most of my friends that tell me or ask me that they want to buy a camera but they don't know which one, they usually say, oh, I'm going to be shooting my kids. You know, I can recommend you a bunch of cameras, but each manufacturer is different because I don't know the features that you, you're looking for. I don't know um, what your budget is because when I ask them these questions, they always tell me what the first thing is. It's like, oh, I'm going to shoot this, but they never answer the other two. <clears throat> so. The next thing you should look at is what kind of features you want. Are you gonna be buying a camera set to do video? Do you want something to shoot like 4K? Or are you just gonna be doing 1080p video? Um, are you gonna be using it say for like YouTube, how I'm using my setup right now? Are you gonna be doing portraits? What kind of uh, lenses do you wanna buy, etc.? It really boils down to what you're gonna use it for and what features do you want. Let's say you buy a 5D Mark IV, you spend the three, four thousand dollars to buy it, but you're not gonna utilize all the features right off the bat because you don't know what you're gonna be doing with it. Like, when I was still a uh, beginner, I wanted to buy like a 5D Mark III because I knew that was the best camera on the market at the time for Canon, and, but I didn't feel like dropping the $3,200 at the time because it didn't make sense to me because I was like, well, I'm just learning. I should just buy something that's like five to $700 and then I'll still have extra money to buy some lenses. Which leads me to my next point, what your budget is. I can tell you which cameras to buy and which lenses to buy, but I don't know how much you're willing to spend. And sometimes when people say, hey, see the actual sticker price for a lot of these cameras and lenses, they're like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't do it. And then they get discouraged. But if you're willing to shell out some money, with let's say $500, you get a decent entry level camera. It's not gonna have all the features in the world, but it's gonna take good pictures, and then you're just gonna learn and practice and practice and practice until you get better. And then if you make a career out of it, or you start getting more paid work, then you could start upgrading your equipment, buying better lenses, etc. You know, those are just some of the things you should keep in mind, just because the most expensive camera isn't always better. I could tell you to go buy a Hasselblad, you know, medium format camera that's gonna run you anywhere between like 10 to maybe $25,000 to take pictures. 
but you're probably not gonna wanna do that because it's like, hey, that's a down payment for a car or a down payment for a house. Like, some people are so convinced that like, I'm gonna spend this much money on a 5D Mark IV because it's the best camera. And you know, I see a lot of people, especially on Instagram, they take a lot of pictures with these cameras and they're like, yeah, I'm rocking a 5D Mark IV. Oh, cool but they don't really know how to use it. They just buy it because it's like, you know, you buy an Apple product, like you want it because you want the brand name. It's like you go to Starbucks over some other cafe because people are obsessed with Starbucks cups and whatnot because it's a brand. <clears throat> so just remember to keep those three things in mind. You know, what are you gonna use it for? What are the features you want? And what your budget is? Like what price are you willing to pay to get this started with this equipment? And then just go out there and shoot and then go on YouTube and look for tutorials. There's plenty of tutorials out there on how to use certain cameras, uh, you know, what, how to do certain things on like say post-production like Lightroom. Uh, Cause that's what I did when I first started. I didn't have mentors teaching me how to shoot. I actually had to learn the hard way. And I went out there and my pictures came out blurry and overexposed and just, and after watching a lot of these tutorials, I got better. So that's something that you should also keep in mind. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this short little video and I hope it was useful and insightful for you. Um, you know, just consider those three things next time you go shopping for a camera and, you know, have fun, shoot, learn and you know ask questions if you have friends that are photographers like I'm always happy to help people when they ask me questions and if you have any questions you guys could comment down below but at the same time also put the extra effort in as well to learn some stuff on your own because that's gonna make you a much better photographer or videographer whatever you're gonna do I'll just say creative because it's so broad it'll make you a better creative because you're actually willing to put the time to learn something new if you guys found this video useful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.